Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the drug treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. So we've seen now how we are going to initiate adaptive immune response after adaptive immune response against the citrullinated protein autoantigens which are present within the synovium. And this is going to occur once you have had that initial synovitis. And one of the things that this is going to result in is it's going to result in antibodies being produced against these uh, new citrullinated proteins uh, in the synovium. Okay, so we might have lost immune tolerance against these uh, autoantigens. Uh, you know, it could have happened years before. However, because um, they were hidden away in the synovial joints, they were protected from the adaptive immune response. But once you've got this acute inflammatory response occurring within the synovium, then uh, dendritic cells are going to start presenting those antigen fragments to uh, T cells and you're going to get the kick starting of an adaptive immune response against them. Okay, however what we're now going to turn our attention to is how these T helper 17 cells are going to do other things other than just uh, give T cell help to B cells and I did say that this uh, pathway here is still controversial. We know that B cells do get activated, but whether they're being activated by T helper 17 cells or not uh, is controversial, although we do know that T helper 17 cells can help B cells, and we also know that T helper 1 and T helper 2 cells are very low in rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So, we're now going to turn our attention to the other thing that T-helper-17 cells are going to do. So basically, these T-helper-17 cells that you've produced, they accumulate in the synovium, okay? So you're going to get loads of T-helper-17 cells in the synovium, and they're also going to be within the synovial fluid, because of course they overflow into the synovial fluid. And they produce certain cytokines. Okay, so what are the important cytokines uh, that T helper 17 cells produce? Well, there are three major ones that they produce. Firstly, they produce interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, just like uh, the sentinel cells did uh, in the original. Um, uh, setting off of the synovitis. Okay, so these two are then going to cause type 2 activation of endothelial cells and they're going to contribute to the propagation of the synovitis. But these T helper 17 cells are also going to start producing something new, interleukin 17. And whether you put a dash there after the IL and the number is really up to you. It doesn't make much difference. Okay, so they're also going to start producing this interleukin 17. Okay, now these three cytokines are therefore going to go up in the um, interstitial fluid of the synovium and also in the synovial fluid. Now what they do is they activate cells that make up the synovial membrane and also cells that are actually within the synovial fluid to produce two other molecules. Okay, so they're going to act on cells within the synovial joint okay, uh, that mainly are in the synovium, but some will actually be within the synovial fluid. And they're going to activate these cells within the synovial joint uh, to produce two other cytokines. Now, what are these two cytokines that these cells within the synovial joint are going to produce? Well, one is macrophage colony stimulating factor, which is often abbreviated to MCSF. So, in full, this stands for macrophage, that's the M, and then the CSF does not stand for cerebrospinal fluid, but instead stands for colony, that's the C, stimulating, that's the S, and then factor, that's the F. Okay, so these uh, cells within the synovial joint are going to start producing macrophage colony stimulating factor. And then the other thing they're going to produce is something known as uh, rank L, okay? And uh, this stands for the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Okay, so rank stands for receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, and then it's the ligand of the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, uh, so rank is the receptor that this is going to act on, and this is the ligand for that receptor. So receptor activator of nuclear factor K 
kappa b and then the ligand. Okay, so rank L stands for the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa b ligand. Now, these two cytokines are going to go up, therefore, in the interstitial fluid of the uh, synovial membrane and also uh, within the synovial fluid itself. And what they're going to drive is they're going to drive the differentiation of monocytes into osteoclasts. Okay, so we discussed that in the uh, inflamed synovial membrane, one of the cell types that you will be recruiting from the blood are monocytes. Okay, and we discussed that monocytes can come into the interstitial fluid of the synovium and differentiate into macrophages, they can differentiate into dendritic cells, but now another cell type that they can differentiate into is osteoclasts. And they will differentiate into osteoclasts uh, because of the presence of this macrophage colony stimulating factor and this receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Okay, so basically macrophage colony stimulating factor triggers the first part of the differentiation of monocytes into osteoclasts so we can divide this process into two halves the first half is stimulated by macrophage colony stimulating factor and the second half of the differentiation process is going to be stimulated by the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa b and on the surface of the monocytes, you have receptors for both of these cytokines. You have a receptor for macrophage colony stimulating factor called the macrophage colony stimulating factor receptor. And you have a receptor for the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, which is just the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B rank. Okay, so MCSF will act on the MCSFRs on the surface of the monocytes and trigger the first half of the differentiation process. Then the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand will act on the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B and uh, on the surface of the monocytes and that will trigger the second half of the differentiation. So you get monocytes differentiating into osteoclasts and this is occurring within the synovium. Okay, now what's the significance of this? Well, osteoclasts, basically those uh, break down bone tissue. Okay, now where is the bone tissue actually going to get broken down? Well, let me draw a synovial joint and then we can discuss where the osteoclasts are actually going to break down the bone tissue. So, here are the two terminal ends of the bones and we know that they are covered by a layer of hyaline cartilage. Okay, so here is the then have the synovial membrane on top of this with the fibrous membrane outside of that making up the joint capsule. Okay, so there are the two layers of the joint capsule. So again on this side you have the synovial membrane which is close to the uh, lumen of the articular cavity. Okay, and then the fibrous uh, layer outside of the synovial membrane making up the outer layer of the uh, joint capsule. Now, Basically, the osteoclasts that are in the synovial fluid and in this portion of the synovium here are not going to actually be able to break down bone because this cartilage is covering the bone here. So it's going to be the osteoclasts that are in this portion of the synovium here and this portion of the synovium here and this portion of the synovium here and this portion of the synovium here, here that are actually going to see bone. Okay, so in these four sites, the synovium comes into contact with bone, okay? And here, the osteoclasts which are present here will start degrading bone, so you will get cracks into the bone like so, okay, where the osteoclasts have spread through and started resorbing the bone, basically, okay? And what will then follow is you'll get loads of inflammatory tissue filling in this gap because of course the inflammatory response the synovitis is still continuing so inflammatory tissue will replace the bone in this crack basically and this inflammatory tissue that you have infiltrating into the bone is what's known as panis okay so uh, with chronic rheumatoid arthritis what gradually starts to happen is you um, you resorb 
bone and you get these cracks into the bone and they fill with inflammatory tissue and this inflammatory tissue is called pallus. Okay, and we'll call it there for this video. That now completes our discussion of the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis and in the next video we'll turn our attention to drug treatments.